Hello everyone, welcome to Follow Him Favorites. My name is Hank Smith. I'm the host of a podcast called Follow Him. I'm here with my awesome, incredible, wonderful co-host John, <laughs> by the way, one of my close friends. And every week we do a little, uh, a little clip called Follow Him Favorites, where we just take one question uh, that's relevant to the lesson this week and just seek to answer that one question. And John, here's the question for this week. We were looking, we're looking at the beginning of Exodus, and you know, when you picture Moses in your head, you picture this confident, uh, I'm going to go do what the Lord has asked type, you know, person, but yet the Moses we get in these chapters isn't so confident. Um, he doesn't, he says, I am not eloquent. This is Exodus 4.10. I'm not oh, eloquent. Yeah. I am slow of speech. I am slow tongue. Like if I were to ask you, John, based on what we're learning here from Moses and other experiences that you've had, how do I get self-confidence? Because Moses ends up getting quite a bit of self-confidence later on in the story. So how does he go from point A to point B? What happens? How do you, how do you get someone to a, a point of confidence like that? It's such a good question because we're talking about Moses walking among the pyramids and then all of a sudden he's here and to hear him ask that question, I think it gives a lot of us a lot of hope to, to think even Moses, he saw God and said in, in the Pearl of Great Price, now I know that man is nothing. I mean, this really brought him down to size to a perspective, but then the Lord keeps telling him, thou art my son. So when I look at this whole story together, I see Moses, who am I that I can do this? I'm not eloquent, but I love the answer that the Lord gives him actually in Exodus 3, verse 12, certainly I will be with thee. He doesn't say you're great, you're awesome, you're special, you're wonderful, you are saved for this day. He just says, I'll be with you. I, I'm right here. I will be with thee. And I think this is pretty lofty, but the idea of at the sacrament table, we are given this promise, you can always have my spirit to be with you. And so maybe it's not self-confidence as much as confidence in God and what he can do with me and his promises that, that he'll be with me. And like I said, that, that would have been hard for me to understand as a 12-year-old, a little easier for me to understand now, but maybe this is a, a starting point. I'll be with you and I'm going to help you with all of this. I really like that, John. Moses does what I think a lot of us do is we list all the things I'm not. Right? <laughs> that were wrong. Not, yeah. <laughs> yeah. All the things that are wrong with me. I'm not eloquent. I am slow of speech. I am slow tongue. And the Lord, he doesn't want him to focus on that. He says, look at me. Who made man's mouth? Right? Who, who made all of this? Go, I will be with you. So I like what you said there. It's not so much self-confidence as it is confidence in God. Yeah. We love the story of Nephi in 2 Nephi 4. His father dies, probably one of his best friends in the whole world. And then he says, wretched man that I am. But then he says, I know in whom I have trusted. And it's not himself. It's I've trusted God and God has done this for me and he's done this for me. And he's done. And here's Nephi saying, God has been with me. And that's where I'm going to have my my confidence. When my children come to me with, you know, they're discouraged and they've, they found out they're not good at something. Right. Uh, mm -hmm. and I said, listen, this happens to me all the time. We'll find out. <laughs> Story of my life. I, yeah. Where I'd <laughs> hoped I'd be. We don't get our confidence from ourselves, our gifts, our skills, even though those are wonderful things and you should always be pursuing, um, you know, improvement. That's uh, God wants us to improve and grow and progress. But our confidence comes from our relationship with God, not what other people think or what we see when we look in the mirror or even, you know, listing the things we're not. I have a quote in my scriptures here from L. Tom Perry. I hope our listeners remember him. He says, if the Lord sees greatness in you, you can see that with Moses. The Lord sees something. He said, how then should we see ourselves? Um, you know, I, maybe we, we ask the Lord, show me what you see in me. A patriarchal blessing can help that. Yes. John, the Lord can say, look, here's what I see. I don't have the words for how awesome it is to have a patriarchal blessing, to have the Lord tell you, here's your gifts, your capacities, your talents. And now you're going to need to go develop these. You're going to need to go and do, but here's what I see in you. And who gets that? That is the coolest thing we have. So I like to say to my class, okay, why are you here to get a body to be tested? And I like to say, no, 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 no. That's why everybody's here. Why are you are here? You. Yeah. That's a patriarchal blessing. And it can give us that kind of the Lord saying, hey, I'm with you. 
Not only that, I have seen what you can become. I know your gifts, your talents, your capacities. Here's some direction. So yeah. maybe Moses said this is, was like a patriarchal blessing for him when the Lord says, I'll be with thee and I'm, I'm going to help you. There's a connection here between talking to God. Let's, let's say prayer. There's a connection between Moses talking to God, praying to God, and his confidence. I would say the more you sincerely pray on your own, the more confidence you're going to have. I've heard it said before, those who kneel before God can stand before anyone. I really think that God says, listen, come talk to me often. It will build your confidence. So anyone out there who's saying, oh, I just don't have a lot of confidence. I don't have a lot of self-esteem. Really focus in on those personal prayers and see if it doesn't help you stand. You know, morning and evening, even any time during the day, go say a personal prayer and see if you don't stand up just a touch more confident every time. Um, I've seen that happen in my life. I love that. And I would add to it. And just remember last Sunday, you made a covenant, you renewed a covenant and the Lord said, you can always have my spirit to be with you. And boy, that, that can make you stand a little taller right there, but yeah, yeah. you're not alone. I'm with you. So go forward, but I, I'm right here. I will be with thee. I like that you pointed that out. I will be, he even says in verse 12 of Exodus four, I will be with thy mouth, right? Yeah. <laughs> you're not going to be on your own. You're never going to be alone. You never need be or feel alone. I will be with you. And that's the promise of the sacrament prayer. You always have a spirit to be with you. There's, there's, there's never a time when we're alone. We have so many single adults in our church, and Elder Bruce C. Hafen just pointed that out. The promise of the sacrament, I will be with thee. And so you won't be alone. I'll be with you. If God's with you, that's pretty good company. <laughs> if God be for us, who can be who against can be us? against us? Yeah, <laughs> I'm grateful for your insights. I think that that's going to help me. All human beings have times where they question: Am I good enough? Am I supposed to be doing anything like this? Who am I to be standing up and talking? Well, who am I to, to think I can do this? But over the years, we've built our confidence not in ourselves, but in our relationship with the Lord. My confidence in the things I teach is because the things I teach are so good. You know, yeah. it's like sometimes my delivery might be good. That's me. But we talked about wonderful things today in the scriptures and my confidence is in them. And maybe yeah. that's a, a a way that we, we work through that. Cause yeah, we're nobodies, but maybe with God, we can be somebody. The message and our, and who we're with. That's what I say, people. Oh, that was a great talk. Well, you can't lose when you have good material. <laughs> you know, That's so when you great. have the Book of Mormon, when you have yeah. the Old Testament, yeah, and you have the Bible. So not even I could have messed this up, right? <laughs> uh, so great. Well, thank you all for joining us on our uh, Follow Him favorites. We hope you'll come over. Come listen to the full podcast called Follow Him. You can get it wherever you get your podcast. But if not, come join us next week for another Follow Him favorites. Mm -hmm.